Time for some sports commentary from your sports department is Appitude. I'm John Apicello. Let's talk the NFL draft, shall we? And oh, how far this thing has come. It used to be a mechanical, necessary replenishment of NFL talent, right, into the league. It's gone from watching something as thrilling as watching your accountant balance your checkbook to something just this side of the bachelor, bachelorette, love at first sight, love at first smite, semi-reality, straight trash TV show, right? My case in point is this fine young man, Kentucky quarterback Will Levis. Thought to be one of the four quarterbacks that were first-round picks out of Kentucky. Three quarterbacks were selected in the first four selections, but Levis fell all the way out of the first round. Now, this happened more because of teams, team circumstances than his ability level. The teams from 5 to 33 really didn't have a crucial needed quarterback or already had dealt with that situation. But nonetheless, the cupboards treated him like he was the guy who didn't get the rose or the date or whatever. And suddenly it's more about looking at his distress than the actual nuts and bolts of drafting needs. The Titans, by the way, would trade up for him in round two. But by then, frankly, damage done. Are we not better than this? Is it not about his performance? It's a twisted attempt to inject drama into this because, it, frankly, it's not a great TV watch if you just read off names, right? Now, I like the on-location parties in NFL cities. That seems like a fun idea. Would love to go to a draft party. But this, let's look in the green room to watch the guy's life pass before his eyes. Can't we just leave this to the empty souls that are drawn to this kind of pre-produced, planned, emotional, primetime carnage, which everyone is drawn to? We have to be better than this. Now, to the commanders and some actual nuts and bolts, I know we're awaiting ownership change and maybe major front office moves as well. We know all that's in progress, but this class feels more like we would have expected from a Dan Snyder situation, right, with Dan in charge. Commanders GM Martin Mayhew went secondary in his first two picks. Seems like a pretty good idea, but let's think about this. I like quarter, corner Emmanuel Forbes, but after that, another defensive back in round two. I think that's foolhardy because you've got a young quarterback in Sam Howe who needs to keep upright, needs to stay healthy. You need an upgraded offensive line. So what do you do? You're the commanders. You'll wait until round three to get a center and round four to get a, another old lineman who's from Utah. These two positions need to be the second and third round picks, if not the first and second round picks. I, I don't have a problem with a couple of DNs as insurance on Chase Young. That makes sense. But another running back, really, this league is one on the lines and their ability to wing it around the yard. You need an offensive line to do that. I don't know. This didn't feel like a coherent draft effort. But what's new with the commanders, right? Maybe Washington fans will just have to wait until the new owners take over, perhaps new front office, new management, and just a new theory on how to win in the NFL. Because the Snyder hangover, and that's what I like to call it, still feels like it's clouding this franchise, or dare I say, dark clouding it, if you will. But that's just my opinion. I've been wrong before.